the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. This is Business Rockstars. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Brittany Whitney, and my guest today is Ben Higgins, co-founder of Generous Coffee Co. and author. Ben talks about running a for-purpose business and how small businesses can pivot and find additional resources during these turbulent times. Ben, thanks for joining us today. Um, Ben, so for those who are not familiar with Generous Coffee Company, tell us about it. Yeah, so Generous, uh, in short, there's a lot of details here here that I'll I'll go unsaid, but uh, I went to Central America for the first time about 15 years ago, and we started a nonprofit that does sustainable change in communities that need it the most. And so we partner with these communities and help them uh, fulfill their biggest dreams. And so they tell us what they need, what they want, what they dream of. And then we just kind of walk behind them to help where we can. Well, that nonprofit's growing and we needed a, a sustainable way to, uh, to find fundraising. And so I took over where we started. And then I now am taking over a company called Generous. And our idea is that we are a for-purpose company. So we're for-profit, but we sell uh, products, mostly coffee. And then we donate 100% of the profits um, to nonprofits uh, around the world. And so we are a for-purpose company. We sell really good product uh, and then we donate it. That's amazing. So I want to go way back, um, Mm -hmm. right when this was kind of just an idea Um, Tell us what you did um, and what steps you took to kind of really launch this company. Well, it's difficult, right? So I would say, you know, to launch this company, it felt oftentimes uh, like I was flying a plane uh, and building the plane at the same time. So it was a lot of ups and downs. It was a lot of victories and successes and then trying to fill holes along the way. But one of the things I did uh, was I leaned on resources around me. A lot of people who had walked through it before. uh, I asked a lot of friends and family for support and help. Um, Obviously, I had two other founders. And so I leaned on them uh, for their knowledge. Uh, But it was, uh, I would say starting this was mostly me trying to gather the resources I had around me, be that my platform, be that tools I could read online or be that friends and family and ask them for their guidance along the way. And did you have any knowledge of the coffee business before you went into this? No. <laughs> uh, now, we do sell specialty grade coffee. So if somebody's like, hey, I was going to buy this coffee. And so I found out that Ben uh, doesn't know anything about coffee. I know about coffee now. Uh, it's right. been uh, three years. But uh, I did it. Uh, we just knew we wanted to have a product that brought people together. We want to have a product that... Uh, could communicate uh, a message around it that would bring people to the table to share st- their life stories. And, uh, and coffee was the product that we thought fit in. So I didn't know a lot about coffee. I had to learn it as we went. And you have two storefront locations as well as delivery. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Uh, well, unfortunately, one of our locations did have to close um, due to COVID. Yeah. And uh, it was in a, a business district downtown. And um nobody's working downtown. And so that right. model kind of changed, but we still do have a very active location in Golden, Colorado. Um, our, it's, it's a great uh, shop. Uh, we have a big pay it forward wall, which is pretty cool. You walk in and you can buy a cup of coffee for somebody and put a sticker up on the wall and somebody new can come in and grab it and say, the sticker says, this is for a mom who just needs a break. You pull that sticker down, you go and you redeem that coffee. Um, it's pretty cool. But that shop's still active. It's doing really well, but our, one of our biggest um, source of revenue is online at generouscoffee.com. We sell all of our, all of our products, apparel, mugs, everything that is uh, for purpose. So it's, it's made usually by hand. It's sustainably sourced. It has a story behind it um, that's making hopefully the world a better place. So you can buy it and then we just donate on the back end. And as you mentioned, obviously, a lot of small businesses are going through a tough time right now. Mm-hmm. Um, what can businesses do or what can people do to help small businesses during these turbulent times? Yeah, well, one of the best resources that we've leaned on um, over the last few months is uh, the smallunites.org. It's a place where there's a ton of resources, a ton of support and help. Um, It's an incredible campaign where a lot of uh, very recognizable brands have partnered together to support small businesses because I think um, 
it's it's not a secret that this last year has been really t- difficult, especially for storefronts, um, but also online businesses and, and people and, and, as, and individuals. Um, and so I go to smallunites.org and you can go there, you can um, uh, get some uh, education on what benefits there are to purchasing uh, as small businesses. Uh, you can find resources to donate then to small businesses. So you can either donate to the GoFundMe um, that is supporting small businesses to start your own fundraiser. Um, you can maybe start a fundraiser for a, non- or for a small uh, business that you really care about. And so that's a resource I'd really dig into. Uh, it would help educate anybody. Um, and it also gives a great resource to how you can help in your local community. That's amazing. I love that there are so many resources out there right now to help small businesses mm-hmm. during this tough time. Um, you also mentioned that you have some co-founders. Yeah. What was it like finding your co-founders? Did you know them before or what's that story? I did know them before. So one of them is the founder of the nonprofit that I was working with. The other one is somebody uh, in our hometown of Warsaw, Indiana, a home of a lot of small businesses. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he has a business of his own. And so really he was kind of uh, one of those resources I knew, knew we needed to pull from. But the interesting part of the founders that I had to find uh, or that we found maybe together was because we're donating 100 percent of the profits. What that means is in our uh, operations agreement, all the owners have signed off on the ability to make any profit on the value of the company or on the sale of a product. So we had to find that unique person who says, I just believe for profit business business can do great things, can make the world a better place. And I also am uh, am allowing my time and my capital um, to not be reimbursed for that or to not be redeemed for that. And so this was a unique group of people we had to find. And so it was hard, but we found them um, people that simply believed uh, that they can make the world a better place by starting this business um, and also had the resources to do it. Uh, for a for-purpose company, how did you get the capital at first to start? Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the founders. So again, we had to find these founders who maybe uh, they had other businesses that had had helped them financially. Or, um, you know, for me personally, I was able to work on some really great projects leading up to this uh, the founding of Generous or pull, pull money, money out of the bank. Um, we just believed in it. We believe, well, we still believe in it, I guess. Right. I mean, we're, we're growing. We have a team around us now. That doesn't mean that people that work for Generous can't take a salary. I, I think that that's a misconception, but the salary has to be um, responsible, you know, with our, we have to be responsible with our funds. So people can't be making a ton of money on this. It's really, Hey, we want to, we want to spread a message that small businesses can do great things in their communities and around the world. Um, and also, uh, businesses in general can build in the margin or design a model to where they can donate back to nonprofits around the world. And so we, had, when we found our founders, when we got started, we had to find the capital, the right people with the right amount of capital that could give the money to generous to say, I believe this is going to make the world a better place. And that's what I want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, running a startup is no easy task, as you know. I'm sure you face hurdles on a daily basis. Um, what was kind of one of the biggest challenges you faced or are facing today? Obviously, I know COVID's a huge challenge, but um, how have you kind of overcome that obstacle and come out stronger on the other side? Yeah, I think that's a great question. But I, maybe I, I would also add in, I think every for any small business owner out there, um, I think obstacles and hurdles come up often. Like there, there, I could go down a list and it, and it would almost seem like there's more negative to positive. That's not true. There's a lot of positive that comes from running a small business. There's a lot of great stories that come from it. Um, you know, take away even the, maybe the financial benefits of running a small business. Just the interaction with your local community is something incredible. And then to see, like I said, with the Small Nice campaign, all these people recognizing that and then all these companies that are established and maybe not considered small businesses coming around to say, hey, We believe in you all. We want to help you out. I think this is a really special time to be a small business owner, especially with the the awareness and now the support that small businesses are getting on the back end. Um, But I would highlight a a few hurdles. The the first season of hurdles uh, was just the startup phase. I go from working as a business analyst in a tech company to starting my own business, learning about insurance, learning about retail, learning about e-commerce, learning about what type of filings I had to have and licenses I had to have and 
all and hiring on people and what that looks like, all the HRs. And that was hard for me. And it goes against everything I have within my personality or anything I have within my skill set. That was the first hurdle. The second uh, is in October of 2018, uh, we ran out of money. We had nothing left in the bank. And um, I think so I, I hear it often when I talk to small business owners. Sometimes you're just trying to survive to make the next payroll. And that was that moment for us. We were just needing to survive to make the next payroll. And so what happened at that point to get over this hurdle that seemed daunting, that seemed overwhelming, that seemed like it could shut us down. And it seemed for me personal because it was under my leadership and under my guidance um, was we had to get out in a grassroots movement to, to ask people to buy our coffee, um, to go to our website, to purchase our coffee, because we still believe that this could be something special. We still believe that the generous model of selling a bunch of stuff and then donating a bunch back could work. And so we went out and we told our friends and our family. We also have an ambassador program of 200 people around the U.S. that advocate on behalf of Generous in the local communities and do local fundraisers. So we had to get out to them and say, hey, we need you more than ever. Like, yeah, we're pulling the alarm. Like in a sense, like I don't want to do this. I don't want to live um, in, in a place of a lack of surplus. But right now we're in it. And so we need your help. And they rallied. That was a big thing. It also did this. Um, it, it, the, the thing that maybe isn't even seen is what it did for our team. It, it reassured us that we have support. And I think support is something so important is sometimes you feel like you're on an island alone when you are in an own small business. And uh, moments like that, moments like this pandemic, when Small Unites comes and said, hey, we would just want to help out. Those are moments when you feel like you have a backing and support. And that's, that's when you know you can keep moving forward. Absolutely. That's such a great answer. Um, you also have a few restaurants, right? I do. Yeah. What I do. Has that Two, been? Uh, three now as of last yeah. week. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. What has that been like kind of, you know, starting those restaurants alongside Generous Coffee Co and, and being an author and, and everything? Well, uh, you got to think I put, uh, this is like a little joke. I like to tell myself that uh, in 20 years, I'll still hopefully laugh at it and say, remember that time. So in 2018, I invested my money into two restaurants and a coffee shop in 2020. <laughs> that wasn't the best investment, <laughs> um, but we made it. We did. And the, the way we did with the coffee shop is we did a lot of to go orders. Um, we continue to open up like our window front. Uh, we tried to create a safe space for people to come and get their cup of coffee in the morning and advocate that we still need them to come and, and help us and support us. Uh, because we didn't want to leave that community. We're in Golden, Colorado. We didn't want to leave Golden. We, we wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the other shop, that's just um, a story that I think a lot of people are going to have is where we had to decide to close the doors. Um, it just didn't work and uh, and people weren't coming anymore. And that's frustrating and sad, but we, we're, we're going to move forward. Now with the restaurants, um, restaurants don't operate on a margin where you can stay closed for six months and still be successful. And so, yes, we leaned on some PPP, um, but we also did a really cool campaign that was going on in Denver where the city of Denver, along with a few nonprofits, decided to use uh, restaurants, locally owned restaurants, um, to make dinners for people without homes or people that were suffering during the pandemic worse than most. And so our kitchens were being able to be used to make incredible meals. Our staff was still able to work, still able to cook, still able to serve, and then we distribute these meals all across Denver. And that's just an incredible project that happened through the, the work of some small businesses, some locally owned restaurants, some locally uh, local nonprofits um, to say, hey, uh, let's try to, to solve a bunch of problems here. Let's not only support our small businesses, but let's also support the people that need it the most. Um, and then let's keep people at work. And so that's how we made it through, quite honestly. Uh, and now um, we, we, we also built some outdoor seating, uh, got some heaters. Um, and, uh, and took the, the necessary precautions to help us now start to get some more people through the doors in a safe environment. That's great. I know restaurants have been hit so hard right now, and it's so awful to see. Um, let's say someone is listening to this interview, and they're like, I want to do what Ben's doing. I want to start a business that helps mm -hmm. other people, but I have a nine to five, and I have a family, and I'm so busy. What's one small step they can take um, to try and get that business launched? Yeah, I would say the first is to really identify what it is you want to do. And so one of the things I tell any small business owner or, uh, and, and I don't, I'm not, I don't have a lot of advice because again, I 
for two years of this, I felt like I was building the plane and flying it at the same time. And so I have learned along the way. But what I can say is the things that I know will be true in 20 years is identify the problem that you're trying to solve or whatever passion you have and make sure it helps and doesn't hurt. And so make sure that you identify uh, what it is you want to do and make sure it's helping your community or helping the world or helping move towards solving the problem that you see. The second is um, is to take time to build out a really healthy model. Um, all this can be done with your nine to five. I did it with my nine to five is make sure that you know what it is that is going to differentiate, differentiate you from the, the masses. And the final thing I would say, and the only reason I've been quote unquote successful, if I would like to identify myself as that is because of the people I've surrounded myself with. Uh, I will never be the smartest person in the room. Uh, I don't want to be when it comes to my team. I don't think that's help, healthy or helpful. And so I look for people far greater than I, and I surround myself with them and I ask them a bunch of questions. And so find a, a small business leader in your community or a small, find somebody that's kind of doing similar things that you're doing and ask them for their guidance, um, ask them for their help, ask them for their lessons learned. And then once you kind of have all these resources available, all these things that you've been taught along the way, then you can go out and take that first step be that step finding a location, be that step building a website, be that step, you know, finding an advisory board or capital um, or even finding yourself some type of distribution so that you have the products you want to sell, whatever that is, then you can start taking those steps and just continue to take steps. But finally, to close it off, um, I, I'll tell this quick story. Take me two seconds. I was in a conference. I was speaking um, at this conference on behalf of Generous. And I was in this room with a bunch of Fortune 500 leaders. And I, I said, I don't belong here to the person sitting next to me. I don't know what company they ran, but it was one a lot bigger than Generous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I don't belong here. They go, why would you say that? I guess because I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just figuring this out. And they said, we all are. We all are. And I think the, for any small business owner, you're going to you're going to feel like you're isolated on an island. There's resources out there. Like I said, small unites. You're going to feel like you don't know what's going on. You're not alone in that. Um, and I don't want you to feel that way. Just keep taking the next best step. It's so true. So many startups and business owners don't start because they're afraid and they have that fear of failure. Mm. And I think we just need to keep telling the stories just like you're telling. And we need to keep reinforcing that you're going to fail, but it's okay. <laughs> and you could get right back up and start again. Um, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And you're also an author. Tell us about your book. Yeah, I just came out with a book on February 2nd called Alone in Plain Sight. Uh, thank you for asking about it. It's it's definitely uh, the most personal project I've ever done. It took me two years to finish, wow. which means I'm probably not the fastest of writers in the world, but I finished it and I'm proud of it. The reason I'm proud of it is because the book is coming from a place where I felt disconnected or isolated or alone or misunderstood for most of my life. And I never knew what to do about it. So I wrote a book broken up into four sections. The first is reconnecting. Uh, with yourself. The, uh, the next section is reconnecting with others through friendship. The third is reconnecting in romance, be that singleness or in a romantic relationship. And the fourth is reconnecting with God, be that something greater than yourself. And so I wrote this book, put it out there to the world. And it's cool because it gets to share a bunch of stories of a bunch of people that I admire, I look up to, that I've learned from along the way. It's not just my story. It's a story of many uh, and their pains and their struggles and the things that have connected in this world the most. That's so important, especially right now, because so many people feel so disconnected. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people could really find value from that. Where can people purchase your book? Uh, they can go to benhigginsbook.com. They can also go to Amazon and type in Alone in Plain Sight. It would be awesome if you did. And then leave a review because I do read the reviews, especially if they're nice. Uh, and yeah. then finally, you can, uh, you can go to your local bookstore. Uh, which I think is a really cool thing to do uh, and something that people don't do enough of. And uh, if they have a loan in plain sight, you, if they don't, you can ask for it. And most local bookstores will go out and order it for you. Yeah. Support small. <laughs> um, right. My final question is if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice, whether it's business advice or, you know, any advice, what would you tell yourself? Um, take morally sound. So more like you have to, don't just do anything. Take some risks, create some stories, um, and don't don't be as fearful um, of the failure. And so, uh, the best thing in my life today, uh, as I am getting married this year, as I have these businesses up and going, is that uh, is the stories I'm telling. Not only about this year, the year before, but 
as uh, of my childhood. And those are all stories that matter to me. And so just continue to create stories um, and don't stop would be what I would tell myself because for a period of time, I stopped creating stories to take, to be comfortable. And uh, that wasn't a good season of life for me. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone. That's where the fun starts. Um, My actual last question is where can people purchase generous coffee? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, so again, through this interview, I've, I've given a couple of resources. Uh, the big one is smallunites.org, I think is a, is a great one to go to, but you also, I would love for you to go to, uh, generouscoffee.com and purchase. We deliver any, everywhere in the U S um, we have specialty grade coffee. So it's going to be the best coffee you drink and you're going to drink coffee anyways. Why not make it life-changing coffee? Uh, you're going to wear apparel. I have some on right now, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you go to generouscoffee.com. Well, Ben, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure meeting you. And I know I'm going to go buy some generous coffee right now. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks. 